So anyway, making sweet potato fries and my mac and cheese in the oven should be just about ready. I'm gonna put these, these sweet potatoes in that oven and I'm getting closing down the kitchen. I'm scared to use my big knife because I already had an accident. And if you're on YouTube, you know, if you cut yourself, they'll cut that YouTube right off. They won't even let you finish video because they don't want to. I don't know why they let people, they let, they let people kill pigs and chickens and stuff on YouTube. Because I watch them do it. <laughs> okay, just about through. One potato should make a whole lot of fries. Make a whole lot of fries. This one is not cutting as sharp as I want it to, but I'm just trying to get through it. You guys pray for me that I'll be able to get out soon because I'm getting get tired of the house, but I have to stay in here but can't get out in that heat. Doctor's orders. So pray for me that when the weather change, hopefully I won't have this side effect with the heat. Dealing with my medication. So keep me lifted up. When I got out the other day, went to the doctor, and then I went and do a little shopping. I get bored, Sister Banks, then I start spending your brother's money. <laughs> Woo! I said, Ken, how much can I spend? He said, zero, zero, zero. But he ended up adding a one in front of those zeros. All right, there you have it. These potatoes, it's ready to be rinsed off and put on this platter here. Let me go ahead and rinse them off. No certain way to rinse a potato. Everybody know how to rinse a potato. I'm going to cut this one. That one needs to be trimmed. I'm going to rinse these potatoes off. I'm going to put some, uh, he said he wanted some, sometimes I sprinkle it with a little coarse of salt. And that's it. But he wanted some brown sugar and some uh, cinnamon. And I'm gonna put them in it, pop them in the oven. And I'm gonna let them let them roast up for my honey to eat. They not the best chopped ones, but after I cut my finger, I ain't trying to be perfect with them tonight. Okay, I'm rinsing off these sweet, these potatoes. Sweet, sweet potato fries. Okay, rinse them off real fast here. You can make them round too, they don't have to be long, you know, you could make them round. Okay, so got them all rinsed off. Now I'm gonna take a peek in there at my macaroni and cheese. Okay, let me take a peek at my macaroni and cheese. I really wanna show you all the finished product of the macaroni and cheese before I bid to good evening. That's, I was, like the way my macaroni and cheese is coming out. Oh, it looks really, really good. So now what I'm going to do, remember I told you I'm, I was going to take the top off. Uh-oh, I got my, oh, it's not covered. I'm going to go ahead and take the top off my macaroni. And I'm going to, let me get this, some of this stuff out of the way. The mac and cheese coming along real good. I'm taking the top off and I'm going to let it finish baking off with the top off, okay? And after that, it'll be all she wrote. I really like the way my mac and cheese is looking. It's looking really, really good. Church Girl Comedy is cooking in this kitchen. You all keep me lifted up in prayer. I'll continue to cook. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some cinnamon and some brown sugar on his... Uh, I'm not going to put any butter at all. I don't put butter on french fries. Whether it's sweet potato fries or not. Put my drink back in there a little bit nice and cold. Okay, get some brown sugar here. I know I got some somewhere. And uh, some cinnamon. I asked him what he wanted on his sweet potato fries. He said he wanted cinnamon and brown sugar. And that's all he wants, so that's all he's gonna get. I didn't take out the cinnamon. I thought he had taken out the cinnamon. Give me a second. I got to find the cinnamon. Here goes some. 
I don't like that brand. I like good brand of stuff. So I'm trying to find my cinnamon here. Allspice, nutmeg, mace, where's the brown sugar? Honey, you should have had the brown sugar waiting on me. Oh, here it is. Got it. There's one brand, but I don't like that brand. I'm kind of particular, you guys. <laughs> my husband goes shopping. I tell him to invest in good brands, of, you know, of food. This is this is made by Surveying Low Pure Gourmet Spices. I figure if I'm gonna eat, I try to eat, you know, buy good food, good spices and stuff. Nothing wrong with the cheaper brand, it's just my preference. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take this little container here, see this container? I'm gonna get a spoon, grab a spoon. Just like so, and you know I got to rinse it because that's just my way. Just church girl's way. Rinse everything before I use it. Dry it off real fast. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some uh I'm trying to get this out of the way of my other camera there. I'm gonna take this brown sugar. Hope you guys can see me. And I'm gonna I didn't get my measuring spoon, so it's not necessary. I'm just gonna take some brown sugar, place it over in this container here. No certain amount. That should be enough. Brown sugar. Then I'm going to take this uh, ground cinnamon and I'm going to mix it together. Just like so. That should be a plenty. Ooh, that smells good. Get another spoon because I dropped that one. That one goes in the dishwater. Another spoon, dry it off real fast. Always keep me a plenty of paper towels, nice clean dry paper towels on hand, because I use a plenty when I'm cooking. Okay, I took that cinnamon and some brown sugar, mix it up just like so, okay? Just like so. You know what, if you have brown sugar, and you want to keep your brown sugar soft. You know how brown sugar tends to get hard? If you keep it in this over a period of time, it'll get hard. But if you, if you know, I should ask you all a question and give away a gift if you answer this question. I think I will. Could anybody tell me what's the way, a very good way to keep your brown sugar from getting hard? If you give me the answer, the way answer that I'm going to answer it with. I don't know what spice I'm going to send you, but I'm going to send you a spice, a couple of spices. You get that answer right. You guys want to win some good, want some good spices? This is a uh, uh, shallop. This is a uh, mixed blend, shallops, garlic, and onion. This one is roasted garlic and red bell peppers, gourmet. Okay, this one is my all-time spectacular seasoning. You use it on all your meats. Even though they call it seafood spectacular seasoning, it's very good with all your meats. That one, I'm about to give something away to somebody. Or, this is a big thing of Greek. Some of the best olive oil you can use on any of your food, right here. Okay, that, or I may send you some, uh, whoever answered this question, so smoked pep ricker, I'll send this set to you. Smoked pep ricker or sweet pep ricker. Very, very good for all your meats. You can even use it in your uh, cabbages and, and, and like that. But all your meats, very, very good. This is smoked pep ricker. If you want that good old smoke flavor, this is sweet pep ricker. It's not real, real sweet, but it will give your, give your meats a very, very, very good uh, taste. It, it, what it does, it wakes up the flavor in your food. And if it's meats, it'll make it really, really nice and give it a nice golden brown. I'll send you this set right here. Smoked pep ricker. And these are all, this is gourmet from Spain. Cause you know I like good spices. This comes from Spain. Okay. So my question is, who can tell me, just type it in. How do you keep your 
light brown sugar or your dark brown sugar from getting hard. There's something you can do that will keep this brown sugar as soft as long as you got it in this pack. Provided you keep the pack sealed up really good. Or you can put it in a, um, a mason jar. Or you can put it in a Tupperware dish. Whatever dish you put it in, make sure it seals real tight. But there's something that you add to it that keeps it from getting hard. If you ever use brown sugar, you know it can get hard. So who can tell me what it is that you can put in here to keep your brown sugar soft? Give me the right answer. I'm going to send you some gourmet, one of these gourmet seasonings. I already sent one of my sisters some uh, Himalayan salt. She wanted to try it. These are gourmet seasonings. So tell me what can I put in that brown sugar to keep it from, from getting hard. And I will get you some, uh, one of those spice bottles right in the mail too. Think about it. You got a few minutes to think about it before I bid you good night. What can you use to keep your brown sugar from clogging up? While you think about it, I'm going to go ahead and blend this, this uh, cinnamon and brown sugar together. Then I'm going to spread them out in that dish. Just put your brown sugar and cinnamon together just like so. Mix it up really, really good. I hope I have enough brown sugar. I think I do. I don't want it, I don't want it uh, too, too sweet. But I do want to have a nice... Ooh, it smells so good. <laughs> I do want to have a nice, nice coating of brown sugar and cinnamon. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this mixture, this dry mixture. While you guys think about what can I do to keep the uh, brown sugar from getting hard. If I give the answer out, then I'll just keep all my spices tonight. Okay, I rinse those, I rinse those uh, sweet potato fries. And these are the sweet potato, that's why they're clear in color. They're not yams, they're just plain sweet potato. And sweet potato is white and clear. I, I guess you can buy red sweet potatoes too, I'm pretty sure. Yams, there's so many different types of uh, sweet potatoes and yams. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and coat, whoo, I'm making a mess. Go ahead and coat that with some uh, brown sugar. With some brown sugar, and I'm gonna drop this on the floor here because I got some little spots of water. Bought me some nice, some nice new slippers and they are so soft on my feet. <laughs> Isotonas, make some really good slippers, you guys. In the kitchen, you need your feet nice and comfortable. So I'm wearing some Isotonas. They really, really feel good. Okay, we didn't put those fries, sweet potato fries, in this baking dish here. I might have should have used a larger pan. Spread them out a little bit more, but I think this pan will be all right. I could put them in my larger baking dish, but I think this dish is big enough. I think it's big enough. I'm not gonna switch. Okay, I think it's big enough. I may need to, I may need to move it up a notch. I don't like it crowding too much. But I think I'll leave, think I'll leave it alone. I don't even feel like looking for another container. So anyway, I'm gonna take these fries and I'm just gonna go in. I'm gonna sprinkle them all over with cinnamon and brown sugar, okay? My pan is a little tight, but it's okay. I got plenty, plenty of baking dishes, but I'm just kind of tired. And I don't feel like looking for nothing else. Okay, and then you just take your hand after you lightly, lightly sprinkle it with uh, cinnamon and brown sugar and just place them in the oven. And guess what? When they cook, they're so tasty. They're very, very tasty. If you want to, you can sprinkle some, uh, you can spray a little uh, butter flavor over it or olive oil. I'm not going to do neither one. I should have probably sprayed the pan, but this is a nonstick pan. So... If I did anything, I would put some, I would spread a little bit with some butter flavor spray. Just like so. See? Just like so. And then I'm going to pop them in the oven and let them cook up. This pan is a little bit tight. Oh, here my pan is. I think I'm just going to switch it over. I didn't see my pan, so I didn't feel like keeping trying to look for pans. Let me go ahead and rinse it real fast. I'm going to switch it over. 
That fan is a little tight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this pan here. And dry this pan out a little bit. I could leave it wet. But now since I'm gonna switch it off, I'm gonna go ahead and spray the bottom of this pan. Even though it's not a stick, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit it with a little bit of butter spray, or I can just take plain butter if that's up kinda high. Here it is. I didn't see it and I don't feel like reaching for nothing. My butter flavor. I think I'm gonna use this butter. This is the butter barrel right here. I'm gonna just spread a little butter instead of that spray. Nothing wrong with the spray, but I'm just gonna take this butter. I'm just gonna spread a little bit on the bottom of this pan. Just out of the, you'll see how I do it. Nothing special about it. Take this butter, just like so. I'm just gonna spread a little bit in the pan. Just like so, no certain way to do it. I did have butter spray, but I wanted to use the 100% pure butter. Okay, I'm just greasing the bottom of my pan, since I'm switching pans anyway. Just like so, make sure you cover the whole pan. Then I fold my butter back up. <laughs> you didn't, I didn't have to cut it or anything like that. I just went ahead and uh, just lightly, lightly spread it some over the bottom of my pan there. And I'm gonna just transfer those potatoes since, since that pan is a little bit tight. And, and I always tell you, don't overcrowd your pan. So if I tell you that, I wanna be a good example. I lost my cap to this. So this is butter flavor. I had butter flavor, but I didn't wanna use it because I wanted to use the real McCoy. That's not, my, that's not my favorite brand anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead, get some, of this, get some of this sugar off my hand here. Just wash my hand real fast. You know, I always say, keep those hands impeccable clean. I think my uh, mac and cheese ready to come out of the oven and I'll be ready to bid you guys good evening. Keep those hands impeccable clean. All your butter at the bottom of your pan. Wash your sweet potatoes up. Make them like little fries. Make them country style. Make them thick as you want or thin as you want. No special way. Just slice them the way you want. Just don't slice your fingers like the church girl just did. <laughs> but in the kitchen, accidents happen. So after that, I have them in this pan. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer them over because uh, my pan was a little tight. And I always tell you, don't crowd the pan. So if I tell somebody something, I try to be an example. I don't wanna be like some folks say, do as I say, not as I do. That's a poor example of a, of a good friend to tell somebody that. I've heard some preachers say that back in the day growing up. Do as I say, do, not as I do. I said, the devil is a lie. You better be the first example. You better be the first example. Okay, anyway, I transferred them over to a larger pan. Now I'm spreading them out, just like so. Just kind of spread them out. I got a larger pan here because my other pan was a little tight. And it don't make sense to use it because I have plenty of baking utensils. I'm not short on baking utensils. Okay, just like so. Once you get them all spread it out in your pan, Make sure you have plenty of uh, brown sugar and uh, brown sugar. I see one that's kind of thick. I'm gonna go ahead and, no, it's not that thick. It was just laying on top of another. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit more. Turn that water off. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with just a little bit more. Since I got it all made up anyway, brown sugar. Make sure my hand is nice and dry because I don't want my sugar to stick to my hand. Okay, make sure keep those hands impeccable clean. And don't be afraid to use your hands when cooking. Some people say, oh, I got to use gloves. It's okay to use gloves if you're dealing with different types of meats and things like that. But as long as your hands don't have cuts on it, like I have here, or, or lots of openings, you don't have to use a glove. Now, I have on a, a real two nice band-aids, but I'm not letting this finger touch anything. Because I was just about finished cooking anyway. If I wasn't, I would have had to put a, a glove on. But I don't have to fool with no meats. All I have to do is just put this in the oven. That's it. If I was just getting started cooking, 
I would put on a glove just to protect that finger going in and out of the water. Okay, that's enough. I have a little extra. Now, I'm gonna keep this little extra, and in the morning, I'm gonna make me a cinnamon toast. <laughs> and I'm gonna put this right on my two cinnamon toasts with my coffee in the morning. I always try to find a way not to waste good food. That cinnamon and brown sugar smells so good, so in the morning, I make me a cinnamon toast. How about that? So I'm just gonna keep my lid covered real tight on it. And my husband, he normally make the breakfast. Okay, now this is ready for the oven, just like so. See, put it in the oven, not gonna take them too long to cook. I'm gonna take out my mac and cheese because they should be about ready. I'm just gonna put this on the top right here while I take, check out this macaroni cheese. Right before I take it out, I don't know what, I don't know what this is going out. How did this get out? Did I take this out? Or did a spirit take it out? <laughs> Woo, so the comments felt a little funny earlier, you guys. I had to call my husband home from church. I don't know what happened to me. I just started feeling so funny. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Okay, I'm just wiping this up so I can take, take that macaroni and cheese out. And I didn't want to have these little crumbs in this eye. I'll tidy it up later. But I wanted to get that mac and cheese out. Okay, I'm going to take this out. Show it to you. Be it a good evening. I'm not gonna show you the uh, potatoes because you kind of know how they should come out. Okay. There you, there you have it. This is my spices here. Nobody give me no answer. I'm gonna check and see. If I got the right answer, I'm gonna whoever gave it to me, I'm gonna send you some of my spice. One of these spices here. If not, then I'll keep them in the pantry and use them like I was gonna do. But I like to share, I don't mind sharing. Okay. I'm gonna show you the uh, macaroni cheese is ready. Don't you see how nice and golden it is? It looks real good, it smells real good, I hope it tastes real good. And this is my uh, my rib tips over there, they're all ready. So I'm gonna show you that and then I'm gonna bid to good evening. I'm gonna ask you that question in a minute. Okay, this is the macaroni cheese, the finished product. I'm not gonna dish it up because remember I told you, when you're cooking, you want your food to sit, rest a little bit before you start dishing it up. You want those flavors to go together really, really good. Hi, Amy. Shout out to everybody that, that, that uh, chimed in today, this evening. This is the macaroni and cheese finished product. I made the cheese sauce this time, which I don't always do. But that's the finished product of my macaroni and cheese. Came out really, really good. Now, when I cut into it, it's going to be really, really cheesy. It shouldn't be dry, and I think I'll at least, at least uh, pull it apart so you can see that part. Let you know that church girl knows what she's talking about when it comes to that cooking now. When you pull it apart, it should rest, but I just want you guys to see. When you pull it apart, look how cheesy that is. See how cheesy that is? Woo, Lord. Good old macaroni and cheese. Real, real cheesy. When I eat it, it's gonna be really, really tasty and really, really cheesy. If you're trying to lose weight, remember I told you maybe this is not the most healthiest dish for you. <laughs> My husband won't be eating much of this because he's not a big cheese eater. I like cheese and I'm gonna call my uh, niece, my nephew over and hopefully he'll come and get my niece and I'll probably give her half of it. So I won't end up getting fat, you guys. But anyway, see the finished product here? I'm trying to show you. When you take that macaroni out, you should have your cheese pulling apart. It should not be dry. Okay? My secret ingredient that I used in here was the uh, carnation milk. And I made my cheese sauce. What I'll do is put the recipe. I'm going to taste this. Don't be afraid to taste the food. Ooh, that cheese tastes real good. Remember I told you when you use different types of cheeses, 
and you eating your macaroni and cheese or whatever you're using cheese with, you should be able to you should be able to tell every type of cheese that's in your mouth. It shouldn't be real bland. If you're using three different types of cheeses, you should be able to taste three different types of cheeses. Okay, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be just bland. I can taste every cheese that I have in that macaroni and cheese, all of, including the um, carnation milk. They all have their own distinct flavor, and it's very, very good. Mm, mm, mm. Woo, it's a crying shame for, <laughs> for me to like cheese like that. But anyway, that's my mac and cheese. Thumbs up if you guys like my finished, how it looks, the finished product. That being said, I'm going to get off and be it's a good evening. Macaroni and Cheese 101 by the Church Girl. And um, with that being said, continue to pray for me. And I'll keep you all lifted up as well. This is my, uh, this is my, I didn't take it out. I didn't plate it up because we're not going to eat dinner. We already, I hadn't eaten, but I don't really have a big appetite. I might have a bowl of corn and some macaroni and cheese. This is my rib tips, I just had a taste for some rib tips. I didn't want no barbecue sauce. As a matter of fact, I got a few pieces of barbecue in the refrigerator already cooked. But I just want some plain rib tips. That's seasoned really, really good. If you season your meat well, it'll taste really, really good. I use smoked pep ricker. I use Sazon on that meat. I told you all, if you haven't tried Sazon, give it a try. It's very, very good for your meats. But always remember, if you're using a season that has salt in it, try to watch the other seasoning that you're using. Make sure you don't over salt in your meat. So when I use a season that has meat in it, I try to have salt in it. I try to be careful not to use my other seasoning. I try to use salt-free my other seasoning. I also use some dried sharp onions on that uh, meat. On my rib tips, I use some garlic powder. And Ken and I love garlic powder. So not only did I use this particular uh, garlic powder, I used some fresh, um, I'll show you in the fridge, garlic powder. And then I used some spectacular seasoning. Good for your meats. It's not salty. Because remember, Sazon got salt in it. Then I did hit it with just a little bit of Creole seasoning. Tony's. I love Tony's, but I got to be careful because it makes me sneeze. This is some very, very good seasoning. If you know anything about cooking, you don't have this in your withdrawal, whatever the hell name I'm trying to say it, but if you ain't got this in your seasoning cabinet, make sure you add this to your seasoning cabinet, <laughs> okay? Because it will wake up the flavor in your food. I don't care what it is you're putting it on. It will enhance that flavor every time. Just make sure it can be, you don't want it to be too spicy, so you want to take it, unless you like it real hot. But it's very, very, very tasty. So I use a little bit of that. And then I also added one more thing. And I'm going to show you that and then I'm going to be a good evening. I just want you all to see what I put on that meat, those of you that chimed in a little later. Remember your organic smoked pep ricker? Organic. If whatever you can get that's organic, always try to go organic because it's always the most healthiest, the most purest. It doesn't have a whole lot of additives in it. Okay, it will be most purest form. If not, the other seasoning is good as well. But if I can get it organic, then that's the way I go. So I use that on the meat. And the last thing I put on that meat was some chopped fresh garlic. I use some chopped garlic because we really like garlic. I use a little garlic powder, but I really want to wake up the flavor in those real tips. So I use a tablespoon, uh, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of this garlic. And I rubbed it all over the top of my meat. Ooh, that meat tastes good. That little crumb that I put in my mouth, sure is tasty. I didn't add any smoke to it. I was gonna use smoke, but let me tell you, if you use smoke on your meat, say you got a taste for barbecue, you don't wanna hook up the grill, keep you some liquid smoke in your house. It doesn't take much though, cause it's very powerful. Just lightly put your fingers across the top and just sprinkle it across the meats. Or either you can put it on your, uh, you can put it on your, you can put it on this and you can uh, spread it across on your meats. You can also just put it on this, put it, put this in a little bowl, and then just saute your meat with a little smoke. That way it'll give you that smoke flavor. Very, very good. And you haven't even had no grill, nowhere in sight. 
Okay? You got different ways you can cook to really make the food taste good. And it don't always have to be outside on the grill. If you know how to season your food well, it'll come out good every time. And people will think you've been slaving on the grill. And all you did was pop it in the oven. Okay? I can't stress enough to try to eat healthy as possible. Try to buy organic if you can afford it as possible. And, and they have good spices on sale all the time. If you take the time, you can find it. It will come on sale. Okay? That being said, anybody know the answer to this yet? Because I'm ready to get off. I'm going to give you the answer. I think I got this band-aid too tight. I asked the question. I was going to send you some one of those seasonings I have, one or two bottles. But uh, it's good to be up and cooking, Sister Banks. I'm glad to be in the kitchen. I'm not feeling the best, but I'm in here. There is something that you can put in this brown sugar to keep it from getting hard. Anybody know that they did any kind of cooking for any length of time and use a lot of brown sugar? Brown sugar tends to get hard. It'll get really hard on you if you're not careful. But make sure you always season it up and get as much air out, squeeze all that air out as possible. Make sure it's seasoned up really well. Close it up really tight. Okay, I was trying to see if anybody give me the answer here. I don't see any answer, so I'm gonna give you the answer. Hi, Courtney Newsom. Thank you all for watching. Brian Davis, shout out to you. Shout out to everybody, Crystal Thomas, everybody whose name I didn't call. Angie, my cousin Angie. Shout out to you. Sister Verna Coleman, hi sis. Thanks for chiming in. I asked the question, anybody know how to keep your brown sugar from getting hard? I showed you some gourmet spices. I was going to send whoever gave me the right answer. Oh, I believe that to me is watered down. I believe that to me is watered down. I don't know what you mean by that, Sister Vicky. What you mean by watered down? Anyway, the answer to this is uh, to keep your brown sugar from getting hard and caked up. Shout out to Sister Deborah Rogers, thanks for watching. Get you a baby pacifier. You know a teether that a baby use when they teething? You get the pacifier, you wash it really, really good, and you dry it, you can leave it lightly damp, but you don't wanna leave no water on it. You wanna dry that pacifier off. You drop the pacifier over in your brown sugar and close it back up tight, you know, seal it back up really, really tight, squeeze as much air out as possible. Put that baby pacifier right over in your brown sugar, and it'll never get hard. You all didn't know that, did you? So if you're using brown sugar and you're having problems with your brown sugar getting hard, I used to have problems with my brown sugar getting hard. I had to kind of pull it apart and beat it with a, you know, beat it loose to try to get to, to use it because sometimes it'd be so hard I couldn't even use it. But get you a, a, a teether, a baby teether, or a pacifier because it's the rubber part that you uh, that keep this brown sugar from getting hard. The teether is the best one. I said pacifier, but the best one to use is a baby teether. You know the teether rings? All different kinds out there. Wash that teether ring, dry it, dry, dry, dry. Put it over in your brown sugar, seal it back up. And when you go back to use your brown sugar, I don't care if it's six months, I don't care if it's a year, I don't care if it's two years. If that brown sugar is still any good, and you got it sealed up real good, it's gonna be soft just like the day when you bought it. So it's the baby teether. Teething ring will keep your brown sugar soft every time. You guys didn't know that, did you? <laughs> but that's it. That's the answer. I didn't see nobody give me the answer, so I'll keep my spices for now. And I'm going to end up giving, sending somebody some. I already sent, uh, I already sent one spice out to a sister already. So that being said, I'm going to be it to good evening. Let me take one peep at my fries, my, 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 uh, Sweet potato fries. They don't take long to cook. They smell really, really good. I'm gonna show them to you and then I'm gonna stick them back in the oven and I'm gonna get off because they're not quite ready. Ouch. I'm just burning myself up. They're not quite ready yet, but I'm gonna show them to you real fast. I'm gonna put them back in the oven and then I'm gonna bid you good evening. I just want you to see them, how they're coming along. I coated them in um, brown sugar and cinnamon and I just put them straight in the oven. I washed them, sweet potatoes, coated them with brown sugar and cinnamon. I, I uh, put butter on the bottom of my pan. You can use butter spray or any kind of butter flavor. 
on the bottom of your pan, wash them real good, cinnamon and sugar, dry rub, and I put the dry rub on it and I pop them in the oven. That's all you do. Doesn't take them too long to cook. So I'm just gonna let these bake off. Three more minutes. I'm gonna take them out, but I'm not gonna stay on any longer. I'm gonna get off. And I'm gonna cover my macaroni and cheese. I guess everybody saw my macaroni and cheese. I'll give you one more quick peek for those that didn't see it. This is the finished product of my macaroni and cheese. Those of you that watched saw how I put it together. I used different, different types of cheeses. I made my cheese sauce on top of the stove with my whole milk and with carnation milk, about a quarter stick of butter. I blended all my cheeses in the, in the um, milk sauce on the stove on low, constantly stirring because you don't want your cheese sauce to burn. I let it just melt it down real, real low to get really, that cheese sauce came together. Really, really good. I layer one layer of uh, macaroni in the bottom of my macaroni dish here. Then I put a layer of cheese sauce. After I put the layer of cheese sauce, I went in and put my dry cheese, sprinkled some dry cheese on top, my mozzarella and my, uh, my mild cheddar, whatever I was using, I sprinkled a layer of that on top of it. Then I go in and put another layer of macaroni on top of that, after I put that layer of macaroni, it's called layering your macaroni and cheese. I didn't put all my macaroni in one pot and just stir it all up together. I layered it. Put my second layer of macaroni. Then I went in and poured some more. Um, I used my big spoon and dipped out some more cheese sauce. Layer that second layer of macaroni with cheese sauce. I topped that cheese sauce with my mozzarella and uh, my, um, my Tillamook cheese and my mild cheddar, whichever cheese you're using. I put that on. Then I went in and put in my last layer. I only had three, enough macarons for three layers. Put in my last layer of macaroni. Then I put the rest of my cheese sauce on top. And I topped that off with some mozzarella on top. Then I baked it off in the oven. Before I put it in the oven though, once I put that last layer of cheese on the top, I went in and got, me, got the, some carbonation milk, just plain carnation milk that I made my cheese sauce with. I went in and I layered a little bit of this on top of the whole thing because you want this carbonation milk to cook down from top all the way down through that macaroni and cheese. Hitting all that cheese, layer of cheese that you have on there. You already have it all layered, but in the end you wanna, before you top it off with your final cheese, you wanna put you some whole milk or some carnation milk. This is, this is what I call my secret sauce, my secret ingredient for my macaroni. It really, really worked that, wake that macaroni up so, so good. So I topped it off with this. Then I put the uh, last layer of cheese and I popped it in the oven. So there you have it. That being said, until next time, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Sister Vicky. You guys keep praying for me. Vicky, I'm gonna send you some tea cakes. I don't know if my sister-in-law, I think she probably gave you some. I'm not sure if you got in or not the last time that I sent to Atlanta. So I, I'm, I'm going to cook you some, Sister Vicky, as soon as I get caught up a little bit, okay? Let me know if you want yours made with pecans or if you want your uh, tea cakes made plain. I'm talking to my friend from Atlanta. I'm going to make you some tea cakes. Hopefully I can get it done during the holidays. I'm going to try real hard to get them to you during the holidays, okay? Let me know if you want pecans ones or if you want plain ones. That being said, I love each of you all. Please keep me lifted up. Thank you all for watching me today. Please check out my uh, YouTube cooking channel, Cooking with Church Girl Cummings on YouTube. Subscribe, like, and share. I haven't been on that very long, and that's fine. I'm learning as I go. I know how to cook now. I love to cook. But what I mean, I, I haven't been on YouTube very long. And I only decided to do that because uh, after speaking with my doctors and everything and praying about different things, I was feeling kind of bored in the house a lot, and I didn't want the spirit of depression to set in, so I decided one thing I love to do is cook, so I decided to um, start a YouTube cooking channel, and that way it'll even push me to do it when I don't necessarily feel my best, and it keeps me going. I, I love cooking. I have so many things lined up in my head to cook. I'm going to be making some lamb chops with potatoes around it, roasted off in the oven, Lamb chops, I love lamb. And I'm gonna do lamb chops. I'm gonna be doing some stuffed red. I'm gonna do the Trinity. 
what's called a trinity, red, green, and yellow, or either red, green, and yellow bell peppers. And I'm going to stuff them with uh, ground turkey or ground chicken. I won't be using ground beef. I don't care much for ground beef. So I'm going to be doing this uh, turkey mixture or chicken, ground chicken. Every now and then I do mix a little bit of chuck in with my ground turkey. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to cook that down. I'm going to season it up really, really good. I'm going to make some stuffed bell peppers. Then I have in mind to do some cabbage wrap. I love cabbage wraps. If you all haven't had any cabbage wraps, they are very, very tasty. So I'm planning, I got that in mind to do. Shepherd's pie. Just so many different things I want to cook. And um, this week I did some more corn from the cob. I keep getting these requests to do corn. So I'm just going to tell uh, the ones that come in and want me to show them how to cut it off the cob. Go over to my YouTube. It's on there step by step. Just look under Cooking with Church Girl Comments. And, and click on the one that says uh, tips about cooking cream corn from beginning to end. I showed you how to do it. And I even cooked it off. So go over there and check out my recipes. I have turkey burgers, chicken burgers. I have uh, peas. And I, ha I have different things over there. So go over there. I have cabbage, red and clear cabbage, red and green cabbage mixed together. So different things. I'm cooking up. I have an apple pie, showing you how I do my apple pie and my pie crust from scratch. So please support my cooking channel, okay? It's nothing special. Oh Lord, I took my band-aids off and now this thing is starting bleeding again. What am I leave out the kitchen? I thought it had stopped, you guys. So pray for this finger. I did cut it and I took the band-aid off too soon. It was a little tight, so I took it off. But anyway, I don't have anything else to cook. So I'm gonna get up here and spray some more uh, peroxide and put another band-aid on it. That being said, I love you all with the love of the Lord. As I always tell you, anybody have any special prayer request, just, just put it down there to pray for you. You don't have to go into detail. God knows, I don't have to know. Just let me know that you have a prayer request and I'll go to the throne for you. I'm home all the time, so I have plenty of time to pray and seek the Lord. Sometimes we request prayer. You know, we say, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. But to really get a sincere prayer through to God, you got to spend some time with him. You can't say just two words. Even though, you know, God knows our thoughts, but he wants us to spend time with him in prayer. So when people ask me to pray, I request for me to pray, I, I put in some serious time praying for you. You know, I take time and I really seek God on your behalf. So, you know, when I request prayer, you know, I appreciate all of you that really pray for real, for real, for real. You know how we are. We say, oh, I'm praying for you, but I'm not going to say you're not praying. All I'm going to say is, you know, spend some real time when you're praying for one another. When someone requests prayer or asks for prayer, to me, that means they must really, you know, want you to pray about something. So call their name out before the Lord. When I ask for prayer, I really be needing you guys to pray for me. So I appreciate all of those that pray for real, for real. <laughs> I really appreciate those that even think about me in your heart and maybe not, not really pray, but you do ask God to bless me. I, I thank you for that as well. So that being said, let's pray for each other. And like I said, if you request prayer, uh, you have a special prayer request, you don't have to tell me what the prayer request is. If you feel you're so full and you need to share it, Please don't put it, you know, put it in my private inbox and I go to the throne for you. But that's not necessary as far as I'm concerned because God already knows. And all I need to do is, is pray for you. So that being said, let's keep the faith. Let's encourage one another. Let's support one another. Hi, Cousin Annie. How you doing? I will keep doing my prayers. I will add your name to my prayer list. I have a prayer, uh, I have a little prayer note notebook in there that I put names in when, when I see it on here to pray for them I add it to my prayer list and I sincere pray sometimes I can't get on my knees I lay on my bed and I call your name out I don't sleep good sometime at night I just pray all through the night you know just calling on the name of the Lord that being said I love the Lord I love each of you and as I said please subscribe to my channel cooking with church girl comments Check out my recipes. I haven't been doing this very long. And I'm still really learning how as I go. But I thank God for blessing me to be able to, to cook. Some days, you know, I'm in a lot of pain. But cooking helps me to even deal with the pain. I don't dwell on it a lot of times when I'm in the kitchen. So I 
press through. So I thank God for giving me the strength to do that. And I'll be back this week. And I think what I'm going to do is I got my mind set on some lamb chops. And I also got my mind set on some stuffed bell peppers. So I don't know which one I'm going to be doing. But that's really what's in my mind right now. And I'm going to do a segment on um, how to take care of your utensils dealing with cast iron skillets because I'm still getting requests about that. So what I'm going to do one day is take out my cast iron skillets and hopefully I get my hand on my nephews that he said it needs to be redone so I can show you exactly how to do it, okay? So we'll help us one to another. That being said, I'm going to bid you good evening. I love each of you with the love of the Lord. Until next time, do you do caramel? Do I do karma? What kind of karma? Karma cakes? Let me know what kind of karma you're talking about. Are you talking about karma cakes? I don't know who asked me the question, but I can make any, pretty much any kind of cake you want me to make. And karma is very easy to make. My mother taught me how to make a very good uh, caramel to cover on uh, uh, the frosting. It's very easy to make. As long as you can make a nice cake, two layer or three layer cake, the karma is very easy to make. So I will put that on my list. I'm going to be making some brownies. Uh, someone wanted me to make, I think it was Sister Tony, brownies from scratch. I haven't done that yet, so I'm going to get those brownies done first. Okay, love you all. And those potatoes will be ready now. I thought I'd be off of here by now. They should be ready. I'm going to test to get a fork and test those uh, sweet potatoes, fries in the oven. I'm going to try this one. Like I said, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. This is just a little piece of potato. Just try it. Try your food. Don't be afraid to taste your food. Oh, they taste real, real good. They're not very sweet. My husband wanted brown sugar, but they sure is tasty. They're not quite ready. I'm going to cook a little longer. Get off. God bless each of you, and I'll see you all soon. I'll be back soon. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night, everybody.